All right, so mortgages, as far as mortgage interest rates, have actually come down. And that has happened over, again, two consecutive weeks. We're going to go into a little bit of that uh, here in a minute. And, or the but, home prices are still going up. But wait a second. They say that we have more inventory and, and the sky is falling. We're going to go over that. And rents, <laughs> they're on their way up still. They're about 15% higher year over year. So my name is George Moorhead with Bentley Properties. This is a free channel. We have no paid advertising. This is for you to make a super good business decision for you and your family. There are no strings attached. We get a lot of really great questions, which is super awesome. And uh, in fact, hang on a second, we have a, we had a limited supply. We even have a more limited supply now. If you are interested in one of these bottles, make sure that, uh, hey, hit the subscribe channel. Make sure uh, you send us your address. Uh, this supports Seattle Children's Hospital, which we support. It's free to you. We will send one to you. It comes with a super fancy carabiner. Look at that. That's very fancy. Anyway, all right, let's put that back. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is to give you really good metrics that is here locally. All right, yes, there are some <laughs> doom and gloomers out there that are in Texas and Arizona and Florida and uh, some of the East Coast areas, you know, and they're saying some pretty, well, let's say just crazy things. However, we are still one of the top five. We were even one of the top five markets, uh, you know, in the United States, even through the 2008 debacle and running forward. Okay, we're a little bit different. So we have, to, we have to compare ourselves to ourselves. And we will do that year over year, month over month, and week over week as we take a look at what is trending, what is happening. And you get, well, real numbers, okay? And the purpose of that, again, is so you can make a really good business decision. So subscribe, make sure that you're getting the updates, okay? And in fact, I had a really great video uh, with uh, Jim Triple and Slim Toes on furnaces and maintenance and whatnot and hot water tanks, which is, you know, super cool. We broke them up into two different videos. Uh, we're just uh, putting some finishing touches on them. And uh, so, you know, to give some information uh, in the written section for you, that's super cool. Had a lot of fun. Uh, and of course, uh, making fun of Slim Toast, which is one of my favorite things to do. Anyway, with that, let's talk a little bit about what's going on over here. First of all, there's been a little bit of concern about people saying, oh my gosh, George, the market, it's super slow. And oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that green mark right there, that light green that says inventory says, that is like way higher than all of the others. Okay, understand, understand. that is normal, okay? That is how it always looks normally. It is only since about June of 2020 that we started seeing a flip. And you guys, if you go back to the, the video channel, since you'll be able to tell we've been doing this since 2007, you're going to go back and you're going to see June of 2020. And you're going to, and you're going to hear me say, oh my gosh, this is the first time in my, my career I had ever seen more solds than available inventory. First time. I've been practicing for 30 years. And then I said, well, is it going to happen the next month? And it did. And then I said, oh my gosh, are we going to have a three-peat? You know, I thought this is hilarious. How is that possible? And we did. Okay. Well, that means that we just kept drawing it down. Why? Because mortgage interest rates had gone from 5% and had dipped down into the fours and then dipped down into threes, bounced off the high twos, boop, backed up into the threes. And it stayed in that realm for a long time because the feds were buying mortgage-backed securities. A mortgage-backed security is when everybody gets a loan and the banks are doing these, they package these up into a package, boop, they sell them off to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They then take all of these boxes, they package them into billion-dollar portfolios, make it into a mortgage-backed security, boop, and sell it out on the market, okay? That's where your, your investment companies, your REITs, your hedge funds, your insurance companies who need to make 
conservative, like one to one and a half percent returns to protect your money, but still making money because that's their return and they're just protecting what you have, right? And in other words, it's not doing crazy things <laughs> like investing in Bitcoin. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so with that, when they were buying that all up, that improved the stock because remember, it's, it's, it's on the stock market. The feds, when they raise rates, when you hear about the feds raise rates by three quarters of a percent, has nothing to do with long-term mortgages. That's HELOC mortgages, that's credit cards, those are car loans, those are business loans, things like that has nothing to do with long-term mortgages. That is traded out on the industry. Your 10-year treasury, two-year treasury. 10-year treasury is really the best metric to watch. And then of course, mortgage-backed securities and bonds, okay? As they improved, mortgage interest rates come down, okay? Just like when the feds then said, and if you were watching as of October of last year, when we said, hey, the feds are going to start selling off mortgage-backed securities and quit buying them, that means that the stock price, when you throw a bunch of stock into the, you know, uh, in, into, the, into the market, it floods the market, drops the value down, interest rates went up. There you go. Okay, that's why they took that steep incline because investors started pulling out because it became more volatile. Just like the last couple of weeks when recession has been the word and the flavor and as we've been seeing some hmm, marginal numbers, the word recession has popped up. Investors have been moving back into safe territory, bonds, mortgage-backed securities and whatnot, which are safe. Those values have been coming up. Mortgage rates started coming back down the last two weeks. And they go up and down all the time. And in fact, uh, I'll have you guys throw that screenshot up there for those. Uh, Facebook Live doesn't really see it, but the Google, our YouTube channel, uh, that does see it in, uh, unless we repost it here. But here's the thing, right? When we take a look at the numbers, then it's like, okay, so what's really going on? Well, if you consider, and here's something that's super important. When we take a look at some of these numbers, and you're going to see these, right? When we take a look at the numbers and you see the light green is inventory, okay? And then we see these numbers here, there we go. Oop, my hand's in the way, there we go. Okay, and we take a look at, and I take a focus of Pierce King in Snohomish County. Here's what's super interesting for all of those folks that are a little bit of a naysayer. So when we take a look back and we look at as far back as uh, 1999, the numbers that we're seeing now are still the fourth best that we've seen. Now you might say, George, well, that's number four. Well, sure. We had 2020 and 2021 that were ahead of that. And then we had one other year that was ahead of that. That makes this one still number four. And at that time, we did not have interest rate, uh, you know, shock as we will call it, right? Uh, as what we're seeing now. And that is the only reason. But here's the funny thing. Remember, when we were talking about how do we get back down to four and a half percent mortgages? There were three things that need to happen. The inflation, inflation needs to slow. The feds, okay? And yes, uh, I hear a lot of you out there. I hear you loud and clear. Many of you said, please keep it more simple. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this more simple, truly, truly. There's just a lot of things that we go over in a short period of time. So inflation needs to slow. Feds, uh, the feds, right? Powell is going to be meeting again uh, in July this month, and they're going to raise, uh, you know, the, the Fed rate, that's the lending rate the, that the banks exchange between each other and what the Feds lend at. And that, again, is your HELOCs, your home equity line of credit, your credit cards, your what car interest rates are, things like that, business loans. Okay, it has nothing to do with long term, but they're going to raise it a half a percent. Why? They are, again, still shocking, ripping the Band-Aid off, to slow, to stifle inflation, meaning to slow down the economy, to slow down buying, okay? That's the intent. They figure if they shock the living crap out of you, you're going to go, whoa, I don't wanna buy that anymore, I'm gonna hold off. That's exactly what they're trying to do. Why? Because once they slow that back down, they get inflation back down to a two to 3%, then they will start easing. They, they're, they're new, <laughs> their new word, quantitative easing, okay? So yes, I get the, the intent. It didn't work in 2018, but that was more gradual. So they are definitely taking uh, big monster steps to pull this back. Now, 
with that investor confidence uh, with treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Okay, that is a given. That means that again, in the stock market, that they move into the areas, into the stocks that lower mortgage rates. That's part number two, increased real estate inventory. All right, so the nice thing is we know we have a, we are accomplishing this one, and but not as much as what you think we're accomplishing. All right, inflation is slowing. Uh, we're kind of, we're kind of, yes, slowing a little bit. It's a little bit of a downward trend. We're still kind of bobbling. Okay. Uh, the key thing is that they need to balance. When do they feel that they have stopped? It's like a big ship, right? You just don't say, okay, stop the ship. The Titanic. Well, I'm not going to use the Titanic. Yeah, oh, that'd be a bad choice. <laughs> uh, let's talk about another, just a big ship or a big cruise liner. They say, stop the ship. They put it in stop. That doesn't mean it stops. It just means that it slowly stops, right? I think they said an aircraft carrier takes like five miles to come to a stop or some ridiculous number. It's a long ways, whatever it is, okay? Uh, anyway, there's some probably Navy guys saying, now it's this, sorry, it's just remembering. I'm old, remember that, all right. So uh, it needs to slow, but the key is that they don't wanna bring it to a stop, they just wanna slow her down and then go at a slower pace. And that's what moderates uh, inflation, which helps to moderate and protect your investments, which is super important. All right. Uh, investor confidence. Uh, we already talked about that. So is this happening again? Yes, but it keeps bobbling. Okay. The last two weeks, there was a lot more confidence, right? So when we come back here and we see this number that inventory is almost double. Okay. This is almost double year over year. Now remember last year in 2020, our inventory was, oh my gosh, a half a month? It's a half a month. And so when we take a look at this, here we go. Actually, it's just a shade over. There you go, right? Whoop, there we go. That's just King County. But you can see the three counties that I track more progressively or more actively, we were at half a month. Well, that is horrible. We had we had no homes hardly at all. And we're talking about a massive area, okay? When we're up, this is the Northwest MLS. And, and as you can see, we're now up to, I think it was 1.3? Yes, 1.34. That means that we have actually increased. So we have 1.34 months of inventory. A healthy market is three to four months, okay? Keeping this super simple. Okay, I want you to think of a bucket. And if I have this bucket and I call it the Northwest MLS, and that is half of Washington state, a massive area, all right? Have this bucket and all of the real estate agents, they put their listings in this bucket and then boop, I put a lid on it, okay? If I don't add any more to this, I should have three to four months of inventory to quote unquote have a balanced market. We haven't seen that since like 2000 and I don't know, 13, okay? We're gonna be going on a decade here shortly before we've ever seen quote unquote a balanced market because we've been drawing down that inventory uh, so aggressively, both with industrial buyers uh, and uh, you know just the general market population out there. So we're at 1.34 months of inventory. So when we have that sponge and we talk about, you know, it's all dry and crinkly, that's where we were at at 0.5, okay? Now, when you have that sponge that you can feel it and it's like, well, I can feel moisture in it, right? but it's still not soft, but I can feel moisture in it. That's 1.34 months of inventory. When, when, it's, when it's nice and squishy, that's like two to three months of inventory. When it has enough in there that I put it on there and my hand is definitely wet when I pull the sponge back off, that's four months. Six months is when it starts to drip. Okay, just to give you a kind of a little mental picture of what a, what, how still limited our inventory is because, well, everybody's played with a sponge. <laughs> All right. So actives are up, uh, you know, as far as basically double. It's about 6,000 homes. Massive relief to buyers. Massive relief. Because now we're starting to, we're, we're doing easing on pricing. Prices aren't going down, okay? Prices are still going up. And some people are like, how is that possible? Because there's such a massive demand still. Yes, we had our seasonal slowdown. We've talked about this, the vacation trifecta, right? So we've already gone through 
the uh, Memorial Day and then uh, the summer vacation, you know, with uh, kids getting out of students, getting out of school, you know, vaca- you know uh, people going out for vacation. By the way, the largest number of vacation people have been out this year. Huh, would never figure that out. Because as we said, until July 4th, it will be a real estate ghost town. And it was because our inventory went up and our sales dropped off, you know, 25.8%. 20% on solds, right? Okay. Totally normal. Are we going to see these numbers coming down? Sure. Absolutely. Why? Because between now and the middle to the end of August, we're going to get a new surge as people get their homes, you know, basically they get established for the uh, for the year and for the students and where they want to be. And because Labor Day is still out there at first part of September, which is our next big uh, slow down, which is why the middle of August through the middle of September is kind of a slow period as people are transitioning, last minute vacations, things like that. Normal. And it's, that means we our, our inventory about mid-May, June, all of a sudden we pick up after post July 4th. Uh, Mid-August, we slow down again until about mid-September. And then we pick up again mid-August or mid-September through about mid-December. Okay. Normal cycle. Normal seasonal cycle normal the best part is there are some people that panicked out there and our clients absolutely without a doubt benefited from it and in fact one you know some of them out there like parker he killed it (laughs) it was awesome right so we have some great great you know uh, success stories with all of our clients and people who are watching this channel if you've been out doing your thing good for you because here's the thing New on market is up 4.6. It's 10% for just June. This is June. We don't have enough. We don't have enough days in July to give you some really valid metrics, right? That's just erroneous. So for June, we were up 120%. Actually, 120.3%. Uh, new on market was up 10%. Pended down 25.8, and of course, sold is down 20.1. These numbers, these are numbers are you know in the thousands. So it's probably about four or five thousand uh, homes less sold. That's where the 9.5 comes in. That is a bigger number, not unexpected based on the massive pullback. Well, hey, you know what? When you you guys take $150,000, $200,000 haircut for the same mortgage cost with the spike in in mortgage rates that went up, as you can see from this chart right there, uh, that's not uncommon. But here's the important thing. And what I highlighted, uh, I guess right there, that's where the rates came back down the last two weeks. As we watch that ticker, and you can see, and that happens to be a Freddie Mac chart. So we watch, and that goes up, because you can see the massive, that's a pretty massive increase, right? When you see this right there, that's a massive jump in a short window of time. People will acclimate. Absolutely they will. Will, as what's on the reverse side of this, will we get down into the force? Yes, because here's my prediction. As we continue the quantitative easing, all right, and people start acclimating and the market adjusts to the feds, you know, not buying, but actually selling mortgage-backed securities, which is different, right? Then we start getting a little bit more confidence back into the the stocks that actually drive down uh, mortgage rates because they improve. And I see that happening. So people who are buying today at a lesser price, because the funny thing is, According to the latest MLS reports, when we take a look at the MLS wide, not just, not just Seattle, not just Seaside, not just King County, not Snohomish County, Pierce County, the entire MLS, right? Okay. According to that, uh, home prices, the average sales price went up uh, 10.4%. That actually not our average, but our median price went from 589 to $650,000. Okay. And that is on a year over year. Uh, it's been, however, the lowest gain since June of 2020. Not surprising. Okay. Now, some people say, well, George, that's a big deal. All right. So hang on a second. For all those athletes out there, non-athletes, doesn't matter. If you're sitting there and you're running, right? And then you sprint, right? And uh, and then all of a sudden you start, and, you, and of course you do that short sprint. For me, it's like 10 feet. Uh, I'm just kidding. And then you get back down to a run. Okay. That doesn't mean that you're going backwards right? That means you were running and then you ran really fast and then you did your sprint and then you slowed down. The last two years have been a sprint and the big picture of things, that was just a little sprint. Now, many people were saying, oh, it didn't feel like a sprint. 
Okay, so it was a sprint, but then we slowed down to that jog again. We're not walking, and we definitely didn't go from a sprint to walking backwards. We didn't do that, nor are we doing that. In fact, we're still not even back to balanced yet. We're closer to balanced, but not balanced, all right? So these numbers are so consistent with what I would expect as we get closer to our normal market. Now, I emphasized the average sale. Okay. See, what's important about the average sale, that doesn't mean what home values are today. I'm not saying that there aren't sellers out there that overprice, and we've seen, you know, I didn't put it up there, 1,200 price reductions. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the average or the median sales price, what has sold during that time, has actually still gone in an upward trend. Home values are still going up in an average trend, right? Because again, the numbers that we're seeing are still consistent with what we saw in the, every single June since 1999, which is normal, right? So here's an interesting quote. So Nadia Invagalu, I hope I got your name right. She is a senior uh, economist and director of forecast at NAR, the National Association of Realtors. And she says, for institutional buyers, rising rents translate to larger profits. Uh, no kidding. However, a larger market presence of institutional buyers increases the market competition for first time home buyers. Uh, and research has shown that the institutional investors may be taking a significant portion of the homes that would otherwise be sold to first time and low income buyers. That's not new for us uh, and for anybody because the whole point is that you buy rental properties for people that are at that entry level or that is the entry level uh, area of a home. We have seen that here, not quite as much, but we have definitely seen it nationwide in a lot of other areas. Okay, why? Because they also see it. When they see rents going up, you know, 30% over the last two years, 15% year over year today, you know, just in our region alone, that is a big deal. Those are great returns. Plus you're getting market appreciation. Where's the downside? And so I come to a buyer. <laughs> like I had a couple of clients that say, hey, George, we're going to be holding off. We're going we're gonna to see what happens. And of course, my response is, that is really unfortunate because I think you are sacrificing something here. And I'm going to give you a little logic hammer, bonk, bonk, right? And that is this. Okay. We said this year that our, our home price appreciation is going to be about 10%, not the 17 or 18%, 15% we've seen the last couple of years, but a modest 10%. And we are seeing that. Okay. In fact, we're almost there. Okay. Next year, we're going to see, you know, six to 8% appreciation or as high or as low as four to 6% appreciation next year. That means that we're still going up. We're not coming down. We're still going up. We're just going up at a flatter pace, right? And if rents are up already 15% year over year, why do you think that it is going to be cheaper to buy a home in the future? Why? Okay. If the value of the dollar through inflation keeps going up, which means that the value of the dollar, if the inflation keeps going up, that the value of the dollar diminishes, right? As inflation goes up, the dollar is worth less. Okay. So it costs more to get what you want. And if interest rates are still low, historically low, and I am predicting that in uh, the middle of Q1 that we will see them bought back down to four and a half percent, which is going to be a massive flood of buyers back in again. And we're going to see a lot of multiple offers, going to see some crazy market stuff. And that will be temporary as we start to adjust because then interest rates will go back up again as the feds have the freak out. All right. That's my prediction. Who knows? Brought my crystal ball polish in the other day and to see if I can get that thing cleaned up. Uh, and that is kind of what I am looking at, right? We'll see. Anyway, with that being said, if the only way to create stability is to own that piece of real estate, to get into the game, to start building your equity, why would you think holding off is a great idea? Why would you hold off and let the, in, the, in, the industrial buyers or other folks buy something that really is a great fit for you? Okay, here's, an, here's a better example. If rent, uh, if the average rent in our area is $33,100, that is roughly about a 600 to $620,000 home. 
or condo, okay? You add $500 for every $100,000 and you could actually own so you get that benefit. So as a buyer, why would you think that it is a great idea to hold off? Just something for you to think about. Just think about that as you're pondering what's going on in today's market, okay? Because everything will continue to go up, including mortgage interest rates, ultimately. All right, when we come back here, we take a look at interest rates. Look, no points, 5%. That is down from five and a quarter where it was two weeks ago, which is awesome, okay? Here, non-owner occupied's at 6.375. Still, still an amazing rate, sure. It's not the three and a half percent, four percent, five percent that we were looking at, you know, just a few months ago. I get that, okay? But that doesn't mean that you missed the opportunity. You just missed the discount sale, okay? And for those buyers, if we do hit four percent or four and a half percent from our five percent rate, or even if it starts, you know, hedging back up into the sixes again, um, understand, right? Because remember, it was in the sixes, right? Six and a quarter, six and an eighth. You guys remember that? Just a little bit ago. We're down to. 5%. Okay. As we start again, heading that way, why, why, why would you not take that opportunity? Why not ensure and protect your future, giving your, your monthly expenses some consistency? Okay. That's just my logic hammer. No more, no less. Okay. Now I'm speaking to everybody out there who's on the fence about buying their home. It has nothing to do with my clients. It has to do with everybody in, 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 out there. Again, remember to subscribe because I, we bring the, the logic into this, all right? Okay, and if you disagree with me, hey, shoot me a question. Shoot me a response. I do get plenty of them, and we have really great conversations. Many times I shoot a quick video back to you, and a lot of people, you know, they end up saying, you know what, I, I get what you're saying. That makes perfect sense because I, I spell it out in a little bit more detail. So it's super cool. All right, all things considered, when we take a look at our seven-day running average, this is bumped up because it's, well, Friday. Uh, and these actually dropped down a little bit. These were hovering between the 12 and 1400, which is where they should be. This one was uh, closer to the 1516. We bumped up to 1875. That is still great because we're still seeing progression and forward movement. So if you have any questions about this, hey, reach out. Top three things you should take away today. Absolute top three things. One, our market is not going down. It may slow down, and we had our seasonal slowdown. It is not going down. Interest rates are incredibly positive today. Have been for the last two weeks. Will we get into the fours here for, you know, I mean, probably not until Q1. But we'll keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on your mortgage-backed securities and your 10-year treasury. That's going to help you look at trend, all right? When we talk about inventory, there's more inventory for you right now. Now is the penultimate time. There's twice as much inventory as what you had to look for before. So if you've been on the sidelines, get back out there. For the sellers, don't panic. This actually is a massive benefit to you. Yes, there are contingencies now. We have financing contingencies, building inspection contingencies, unless you've done a pre-inspection. And even on, the, on some that did a pre-inspection, people are still getting their own inspection for their own education, their own edification, which is perfect, all right? What it does though, is it helps to stabilize your investment. That's item number three. We are now protecting your investments. That is super cool because now we don't have this true bubble that's gonna come down. We are seeing normal supply and demand, or I'd say we're normalizing normal supply and demand. So if you have any questions, let us know. Have an absolutely fabulous day. I will see you on the next video. Remember to subscribe uh, and share this channel. It helps with the metrics so other people looking at buying or selling can absolutely see this and it gets out to them so they can make a really good decision also. In the meantime, have an absolutely fabulous July weekend, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.